And hello, how everybody is doing today. I hope you're doing well. Today is Saturday, December the 15th. We made it to the weekend, guys. I hope you're doing fantastic. It's a little slow volume weekend, as we always expect over the weekends. Nothing really exciting to talk about until it's pro probably tomorrow around 6 p.m., probably when the daily candle closes tomorrow, the weekly candle closes as well, and the Asian markets wake up and they're like, ah, oh, let's, let's trade this thing. Let's do something. So... Uh, let's see, get a quick recap. We're joined today by Alex, uh, one of the analysts for Kraken Cryptocurrency, so it's nice not to be doing this alone by myself. It's been a, it's been a while since Alex has been on the show. He's had some, some computer issues, but now we're back in the saddle and doing this live. So uh, let me make sure you're unmuted, Alex. And how are you doing this morning? I'm doing really well, thanks. It's a lovely day here in Los Angeles, California. And uh, despite all the technical issues and uh, otherwise that I've had recently, I'd say uh, things are pretty good otherwise. Good, man. Well, I'll tell you what, it is frigid and cold here in the Midwest, looking outside, looking at my window. Uh, I'm just glad to be indoors where it's nice and warm. So let me pull up the chat and say hi, guys. Sorry, we're starting late. Uh, let's see here. Jurgen Ernst, good morning to you. Scott, or good afternoon, I should actually say. Scotty Ogden, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Christian Martinez, hello, man. Coin Hustle and Russell Dickey, what's going on, guys? And what's up, Seth? All right, so let's uh, let's get into this. I want to give us a quick update for the uh, Kraken Cryptocurrency Trading Group, guys. Uh, so we did. So I did actually update this. Let me refresh the page here uh, because we did close out some XBT USD positions. Uh, just repositioning. Uh, just repositioning where I'm at actually for the for the long term. So we were actually able to, and it's been kind of a it's been kind of a heroic battle these last few weeks, guys, uh, because these last few weeks we've been uh, speculatively longing XBT USD. So just this morning when I woke up, I kind of posted the update, pushed it out to everybody. So the final results are a total of about of about 46% return on equity for the entire total trade. Our initial fills were at 3,500, 3,300, and 3,200. Uh, we took profits at 3,550 and 3,620 on the pump up. Traders should have been out at break even at 3,500 on the way down. Uh, we took another we took another position at. 3380 3400 took profits at 3440 so it was a scalp and then our last position or excuse me our third trade was actually getting filled at 3200 and 3164 giving us an average entry of about a little under 3200 uh, we took profits at 3280 on that particular trade. And then this last trade, we refilled at 3200 and 3150. Currently in profit on that trade. 
uh, but we've set the stop loss at 3150 and we're going to wait for the volume uh, starting on Monday or Sunday evening is how we're going to particularly play out the XBT UST trade. So uh, we've updated week two results. Uh, week three currently uh, week three currently off to a to an iffy start, but it's all right. Uh, we've got our open trades. This isn't accounting for our other BitMEX positions. So our other BitMEX positions uh, actually do have us in profit. Currently up about 10% on week three actually with our open positions. So well, not only that, well. it's it's important to remember that a lot of times you'll open a position and it's not uncommon to be underwater for a while when you're first in a position. So it's it's really a good idea to get comfortable with that idea, because if you start dumping positions the moment you're underwater, then you'll, you'll never make a profit. That's and that's why we hold on to these. Yeah, absolutely right, man. Uh, Scotty continues to work super hard on the website. Let me update this. I believe he did fix that. Yes, he was working. Yep, so he has updated the top banner now. Uh, so thanks, still coming along quite well with the website. Guys, go give a check out at crackingcryptocurrency.com. Let us know what you think. As always, leave comments, questions, concerns, opinions, thoughts, sarcastic remarks, and death threats in the comments section down below or DM them to us on the Discord. Uh, we will be speaking to the Milwaukee chapter of the American Association of Individual Investors on January the 19th in Brookside, Wisconsin. Uh, we will be speaking for about an hour on blockchain technology and how to use mining as a passive income source, especially now with the decline in the price of miners uh, and how investors can get interested in participating in cryptocurrency. Uh, this is for somebody who's new to cryptocurrency and is not particularly experienced. So this is probably not going to be a presentation that's going to be supremely interesting to active traders. But uh, if if you just want to refresh or you just want to come out and hang out with us we'd be happy to see you guys there tickets are still on sale for that um all right let's go over to the chart real quick uh so nothing really honestly fantastic to talk about uh nothing exciting to talk about today looking at the daily chart on uh on bitcoin uh we do see the potential here for a saturday and a sunday of of potentially green uh we do have a spinning a very weak spinning top doji on the daily chart uh uh, uh excuse me for the daily candle right here on bitstamp uh, we've got about three hours until the daily candle close, uh, and we do actually have just a little bit more volume peaking in over the last couple hours, which we typically do uh, right before the close of the daily candle. So um, this doesn't uh, this doesn't look like the bearish pressure to the downside is extremely powerful. However, it is the weekend, so we're not we we never expect to see uh, large dramatic moves in. Uh, uh, in price over the weekend because it's only retail traders. It's not professional traders. It's nobody with a lot of capital uh, moving the markets. Now, uh, this is something that, I, that people have been pointing out. Yes, this is a falling wedge pattern. Uh, I'm not overly excited or impressed about it until I actually see the falling wedge pattern play out and break to the upside. Uh, and again, the reason that I don't trade chart patterns is because I've seen them uh, so, so a falling wedge is a bullish pattern in a bearish trend. So I kind of discount that just, just off, just off the fact that it's anti-trend. However, you will notice that if this falling wedge does actualize and break to the upside, the use of a chart pattern in my eyes is not as important as, as horizontal support and resistance. And you can just clearly see where is the resistance that we need to get over. You have this previous distribution order block centered around uh, 3,600. If we are able to close another daily candle about 30, above 3,600, then our next area, or excuse me, above 3,400 right here, then our next area to take out that we have not been able to overcome is 3,600. And a strong close above that would be, depending on where we go up to that, uh, a close above 3,400 on the daily basis would actually be a break to the upside of that. And we could potentially be looking at the measured move of that falling wedge. Uh, that is a $1,000 move. So this is saying that if we do break to the upside on here, we could potentially go back to 4,400. Uh, which is actually our 786 Fibonacci retracement. Now, I'll tell you why I'm not overly excited about that. The reason why is because we already came down, uh, found a bottom right here. We came up and already got rejected from our 786 Fibonacci retracement. We fell back down, created a new point of control, and we rejected from that as well. So more than likely, if we do actually get up here to our 3400 level period, it is more likely at this point in time that we do reject from that. We'll have to wait until the volume comes in on Sunday evening, Monday morning to really know more about that. But uh, just as we normally see throughout the weekend, Retail tends to be more permeable, so I am expecting actually to see a little bit of green uh, over the weekend. Um, as, as I said, you had the this is already looking like a spinning, spinning top doji, so if there is a little bit more volume that comes into this, we could see a little bit of potential gains. Uh, keep your scalp short, but at this point in time, uh, at this point in time, I do have my stop loss set on our positions at 3150. As we can see right here, so I'm actually in I'm actually in profit on this trade only by about ten dollars uh, with the leverage that I'm using 
not uh, ten dollars not being the position, but my average entry is now thirty one seventy five. We see the price is thirty one eighty five, ten dollars, guys. So I want to give a thanks, by the way, to all the premium subscribers that joined us in the in the Kraken Cryptocurrency Trading Group last night for the webinar on risk management. It was uh, it went really well. It was fantastic. I think risk management is a topic that so many people gloss over and uh, and don't implement as an actual disciplined part of their trading strategy. And it's because of a risk management strategy that I am actually able to do this day after day uh, and year after year. Fifth Ronin, man. Good morning to you, man. Hey, Seth. Thank you, man. I highly appreciate that. Uh, Fifth Ronin says, inverted cup and handle on the 30-minute hike in Ashy BTC. <laughs> that's that's a lot, man. All right. Well, let's take a look at it, bro. Um, okay. So I definitely do see what you're saying. So looking at the 30-minute chart for hike and Ashi, um, would I call this an inverted cup and handle? No. The reason why is because you've already retraced all the way back up to what would be the bottom of your cup. Uh, at this point, this is actually looking like a double cup uh, where you have an inverted cup and then potentially a new cup and handle pattern forming. Uh, again, I won't get overly excited about that. Looking at Heiken Ashi, we do have our point of control now down at 3149. Uh, and we are about to break the 55 period exponential moving average on the 30 minute chart. Uh, and if we actually just go back in time and look here on the Heiken Ashi, uh, we haven't really been able to get over that 55 uh, period moving average, uh, except for the pump back here uh, when we did run up to um, uh, 3620. This is an averaged out chart. So this uh, this is uh, giving us, oh, excuse me. So there's the pump back up to 3620. Uh, so uh, actually, historically speaking, when we do close above the 55 period moving average, that is a strong sign. I don't see any indications that we are actually going to break above it at, yet at this point in time. Again, this is not considered valid until we actually close a candle above that. We have to open and we have to close and open a new 30 minute candle above that. Uh, and then this is actually not a bad setup if you're looking to take a scalp long at this particular time. Um, because you're able to set a nice stop loss. You have here a nice high volume node and you're able to set a stop right around here around 3170 if your actual trade doesn't play out, uh, which gives you a pretty good risk management strategy on this. Uh, alternatively- well, I, I do see a 30 minute bear div here, a continuation bear div for the Bitcoin USD 30 minute. Ooh, let's take a look at our oscillators and see what we see here. Are you on Heiken Ashi? Um, I do have it on the 30 minute Heiken Ashi, so. 30 minute. I'm, I'm looking at Coinbase right now, but it should be on any of them. So I see. Uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, I see bullish continuation divergence on the Fisher, not on the stochastic Bearish. or excuse me. Yes, on the stochastic. Uh, let's see here. And uh, not on the RSI or yeah, on the RSI as well. And not on the MACD histogram. So that's three out of four. Yeah, so that's a, that's a continuation bearish divergence. So it's it's just saying like, you know, it's kind of like the indicator resets upwards so that price can continue downwards in a, in a technical sense. Well, in a layman's explanation for a technical thing. So the thing about that too is that I just want to point out that when you're talking about 30-minute divergence, you're expecting to get a 30-minute re reaction as well. So um, potentially see how yeah, this plays play out. out over a few hours. If this was going to play out like an, like a cup and handle pattern, then you would be looking for the traditional way to play it is you'd be looking for a retracement in between the 236 and the 382. So that would actually put you at about 3175 is where you'd actually want to be placing your entry. Uh, and the traditional way to do it is to set your stop loss uh, right underneath the 50% Fibonacci retracement, which is annoying because the 618 is also your secondary entry point with your stop loss below your 786. So if you were wanting to potentially play this, uh, play this potential, uh, it, you know, uh, this, this cup and handle pattern to the upside, uh, then you would be looking for an entry around 31, 3175 with your stop loss at 3160. Uh, and then again, if that doesn't actualize, you can wait and see what volume does potential reentry at 3152 with a stop loss at 3193. But, um, I'm already in the long position that I've averaged in at about 3175. So at this point in time, I won't be taking any new ones. Um, I do want to wait and see how the volume plays out. So, uh, it's not, not that I've capitulated or anything. It's just that I've, uh, you know, I've, uh, we took, we took XBT USD to the short side tremendously during this downturn. Uh, and it was only, it was only until a week ago that I started looking at potential long positions. Uh, and they have played out quite well for us because we were able to catch 36. 20, 3550. Uh, we were able to catch uh, 3164 to 3280. So uh, mostly scalps, but I'm just waiting to see uh, what happens. So far, 3000 is still being defended, but I'm going, we're going to know, we're going to know, we are going to know next week uh, how next week plays out. Looking at the weekly candle, uh, that's getting cluttered right now. 
looking at the weekly candle on Bitstamp, actually, um, we are looking like we are going to break down. Uh, we are looking like we might close the week uh, below the 200 period simple moving average. Now, uh, we did actually wick down below the 200 period simple moving average on the weekly chart already. And as we talked about yesterday, we had been back testing or excuse me, Clipson actually had been back testing the 200 period moving average. Uh, when we lost it on the daily, that was really the decline at 6K. Then we lost it on the, the two day, the three day, the four day to five day. We just lost it on the sixth day. And now we are potentially looking at losing it on the seventh day. Now, I actually do think we close this weekly candle above the 200 period simple moving average actually. Uh, because it's the weekend and the weekend tends to be like slow lilting volume. Uh, but if we close, uh, if we open up, um, if next week's candle goes down below the 200 period simple moving average, uh, then I start to, I start to reevaluate, uh, uh, the lower targets here as well. So let's see here. Let's look at our data metrics and see if we see anything interesting. I don't, I'm not expecting anything to really have changed. This is interesting though. If we look at the bid ask sum, the bid ask sum, the the bid ask sum continues to skyrocket. <laughs> so this is uh, this is the last 30 days. So this is accurate, updated to today, and we do actually see starting. And I talked about this yesterday, but starting on the 13th, uh, we see that the number of bids in the order books has absolutely skyrocketed. So again, one of the things that I've been talking about is the strong psychological support at 3K. I think it would be physically difficult to break that level and that's why I am watching that's why I've taken myself off this to pretty much to the sidelines at this point in time still have a small position open to the long side uh, but I have a fairly tight stop set as I said I said it at well, 3150. I, I do want to point out that there would naturally be more bids because the same amount of money purchases more bitcoins now yeah but relatively if you just look at the massive increase actually um, just this skyrocketing up of the bids and actually the decline of of the of the asks in, in conjunction now not dramatically not dramatically as well but um but yeah this is um this is this is pretty interesting man to me to see the bid ask some skyrocket down here toward the bottom as we get closer to that three thousand dollar psychological support that's on bitfinex well, so if we actually go over to bitmax uh we do well, see maybe, the same thing as well well maybe i'm misunderstanding is that the total amount in usd or the total amount in bitcoin the number of bids so the number of bitcoins is on the right and the number of uh the number of um asks in usd is on the left um so currently we have no no, no. I'm, I'm asking like is it's a bid ask some so it's is it the amount of bids in usd like there's 50 billion dollars in bids or is it like there's you know 30 mil there's 30,000 bitcoin in bids because you know you can there can be like if Bitcoin is worth 10 cents right now, then, you know, uh, you know, 20, you know, 20 million dollars in or 20 million Bitcoin bids is like, you know, is like only two million dollars. So I'm just asking, like, what's, what's total in USD, the number of bids? One hundred and twenty six million dollars in bids. OK, as opposed to seventy seven point three million in asks right now. OK. Oh, so the number in USD has gone way up. Yeah. Interesting. Now, the that number since interesting. since the third since actually starting on the looking at BitMEX since the ninth or the eighth, uh, the bids were at sixty four point seven million dollars and now they're at one hundred and twenty six million. And looking over on Bitfinex as well, uh, let me find Bitfinex here. Sorry. There we go. Bitfinex and the number on Bitfinex actually rose from sixteen million to 27.5 million in that exact uh, that that same span of time so almost a doubling of the bids on the order book whereas asks have stayed relatively flat and in fact have declined mm -hmm. over that same time period so it seems like supply is dwindling and demand is increasing that is increasing correct. Looking at Coinbase, we see the same thing too. So Coinbase actually rose from 7.44 million in bids to now about 17.6 million. So that's uh, that's more than a doubling of bids on Coinbase, whereas asks have just remained absolutely flat. Now here's the thing. We would typically be a little, we, we are always cautious of this because of the propensity for the Bitcoin order books to get spoofed. The reality of the situation is, however, they can't all be spoofing. And as I said yesterday, we're going to see if some of these buy orders start getting chewed up. And if we go look over at the chart, we actually do see that they are starting to get chewed up. Now, they are strategically placed anywhere from about 3,100 to 2,900, looking at the looking at the large sum of bids on the books. Um, and you guys can go verify this for yourself. Just go over to Coinbase, go over to BitMEX, go over to Bitfinex, and just go look at the order book. Just go look at it.
it's 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 quite overwhelming actually uh, we haven't seen the number we haven't seen a bid wall well we haven't seen a position like this in a while but if you just go back and look at time uh, this is the last 30 days uh, so you can actually see that the bids uh, once the decline really started happening so if we go back and let's go back and look at the chart here so when we broke 6k was the week of the fifth or excuse me the week of the 12th of November so if we go look at that bid ask sum uh, starting on yeah, so here's the 14th of November. Here's the last 30 days. Uh, we can actually see that yeah, bids na naturally like went all the way down, and they didn't start picking up until the 29th of November. Uh, so if we go back over here and look, we can see that bids did start picking up here a little bit. But now that we're at this lower price level, coming close to that 200 simple simple period moving average, uh, yeah, bids have just absolutely skyrocketed. And again, you guys can go verify this on the on the order book. Here's the combined order book, and you can absolutely you can see. Look how thin the sell wall is, and look how large the bid wall is, and it really picks up around that three thousand dollar level. You can just see that slow increase, you know, up to about thirty one hundred. Then you get a sharp tick up in the order book at about thirty eighty one. It ticks up significantly more at thirty fifty, and then at thirty at, at three thousand, it just just really jumps up, man, to about forty thousand bitcoins on the order books right now. The open interest reports. So this is going to be calculating. This is going to be calculating the. Um, this is going to be calculating the uh, COT report. Uh, this is so. This is last Tuesday. So what I don't like about this is now we're looking at this almost a week behind. Uh, but we do actually see that funds are still neutral. They're actually still hedging their position. Uh, let's see. Let's go take a look at. Let's go take a look at what we have here. So we actually, if we're looking at this chart, here is the net of small traders right here. And right here, okay, so come on, man. We have, okay, yep, this is their, okay, so this is their net funds. So they have actually, they were buying Bitcoin. They have reduced just a little bit now. Overall, uh, institutions are still buying a little bit more than they are selling. Uh, what do we have here? The purple line. I prefer the indicator more on the charts, but I have this pulled open right now. Ooh. Okay, yep. And net small, net funds, net others. Okay, so actually we do see we do see now recently um, professional traders or those who are those who are classified as asset managers have actually started picking up their bids a little bit more now uh, funds have started have started reducing their risk just a little bit and smalls are still still overwhelmingly buying so okay bitcoin open interest in longs Yeah, so if we just look here, we can see CME and CBOE long funds. I mean, look at the uh, look at the pickup in longs uh, from from professional funds. Look at the longs from retail traders have stayed mostly flat. They're feeling a little bit of pressure, and we have not seen a, a significant uptick in in the number of shorts. In fact, they're actually slightly on the decline while the longs continue to rise at this three thousand dollar price level. So maybe those are shorts that are still sitting open from way up and there's not many people opening new shorts. Yeah, I mean, this is just uh, this is what you're going to see with with professionals. They're, they're going to hedge their risk. So they're not going to just completely exit out of their short positions and just stack all in the longs. Uh, that's not how professionals do things. They're actually going to maintain long and short positions and they're mostly looking to hedge. And just as time wears on, if if it starts to favor their long positions that they currently now have open as hedging. But what's interesting to me is to point this out is that they have started hedging more. They have added more long positions to their open interest as well. So they still, they're, they're, they're taking profits on their shorts and we actually do see this um, with, uh, with retail traders as well on the, uh, on the XBT contract, on the perpetual swap. Shorts have been taking profits. Uh, every, almost, in fact, almost every like uptick we see uh, is mostly trader, is, is mostly short positions looking to take profits. Um, so uh, this, this was a squeeze. Uh, this was the bottom uh, shorters getting squeezed significantly. And then retail piled in and was able to push it up to 3620 as well, which was also propelled by individuals covering their shorts as well. Individuals that had tried to short the bottom or short it here or short it here, uh, they all got squeezed. And that's what was allowed us to propel up to 3620. Now, uh, did not get that like significant, beautiful short squeeze that I did really want to see if we over here and actually look at shorts. Uh, mm -hmm. I was looking and I talked about this. I was looking for a squeeze like this 
uh, where actually within like a couple hours, we actually just like plummet uh, significantly. This was much more like sustained. This was a nice price movement right here. Uh, we do see shorts now picking up just a little bit. Uh, and if we go over here and look at longs, like longs are just blowing the top off the roof right now on Bitfinex. Uh, if we actually look at the number of longs, like they have actually um, completed the measured move actually of this, uh, of this triangle that I had plotted out. So that was a 24.15% increase. Uh, and actually, no, we got a little bit more room to go until we hit that 24% mark. But yeah, blow, uh, we have blown past all areas of resistance on the longs. Um, now we're going to have to go over here and calculate higher, uh, higher resistance points for the longs as well. If we go to the daily chart, we can see more data. Uh, what if we used a, uh, fib, a FIB extension? There we go. Just one second, my good friend. That's a good idea. Right there. And right here. So looking at the next three areas of resistance, because we've we've really blown past them. Again, I always like to set pro, uh, targets in resistance um, uh, where where we've had previous support. But as you get closer and closer and closer to new highs, or, or or touching previous highs, you do have to start using actual resistance points as resistance. So let's see here. So let's do a retracement from our recent high to our new low. And we are coming up to that 786 Fibonacci retracement. Uh, this is the last area usually when you're using Fibonacci trading style. If you are able to actually break and close above the 786 Fibonacci retracement, then the trend has shifted to the upside instead of the downside. Now keep in mind, take this with a grain of salt because I am doing technical analysis on incomplete longs and shorts data. But for anybody who says that longs and shorts, that it's completely inapp inapplicable to apply technical analysis to longs and shorts data, that makes no sense to me because if you're looking at price action and you're willing to take you're willing to take the assumption that technical analysis is going to work on underlying psychology of how markets are being traded which is the decisions of humans which is psychological by nature uh, then longs and shorts data is just another quantitative data set and the idea that you cannot apply some form of technical analysis to it uh, I don't it's it seems like a very inaccurate misleading and wrong statement um, because I have seen uh, I have seen longs and shorts data respond to technical analysis uh, Fibonacci retracements key points it's all price man everything everything follows certain cycles and certain prices and respects certain levels so longs and shorts data ultimately is still data that shows people buying and selling just like price data is mm -hmm. it's the same activity it's just a different way of presenting the information. So obviously technical analysis, if, which I would hope we agree here if we're watching this, technical analysis works on price, price data, why wouldn't it work on long and shorts data? It's basically the same data. It's just in a different form. Absolutely, man. Let's see here. Oh, I got to catch up with the chat, man. Jay Constant says, hey, what's going on, man? Bought uh, BTC at 3174 and sold for 3225. Just scalping every time works for me, but I sold too early. It's all good, man. Hey, you're Crypto Daily. What's going on, bro? Now I'm scared BTC will go to the moon. Man, don't come in here and panic, dude. It's all about slum. Uh, slow, calm, patient trading, man. Uh, Enter Doc and first target hit at 260. Hey, there you go, Fifth Ronin, man. We did, we did look at Doc yesterday, right? Uh, I wanted to point out, yeah, you know what's funny is, uh, Alex, what was I talking about last night? Um, was it A and B? I said that feeling when the technical analysis that you do on your live stream, but you don't actually enter the position plays out swimmingly. I think it, I think it was oh. A and, was it A and B? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was A and B. So if you guys recall, yeah, uh, I, somebody had asked me to do, to chart A and B um to chart a and b on the stream and at that point in time we were like right here and i said yeah man well uh here's your uh i've got a fit i got i got a fib extension on here now uh and so the, the chart's getting a little cluttered but these red lines did correspond to the targets that i had drawn out for them and i said well here's your entry here's your entry right here and here's your stop loss and uh yeah uh worked out quite swimmingly for him so Oh, we finally broke above resistance on AMB. We did break above resistance. It's looking it's looking nice. Let's look at Doc. 
I did have I had charted this one out. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I charted Doc out for you, man. I did say not a trade I would take. We did hit that first scalp take profit target right there. And you are you did come down to the lower entry of your uh, you did come down to the lower entry or excuse me, the upper entry of that potential entry box that I had talked out that I had talked about. Now, this does kind of scare me a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Not that it not that it scares me, but um, you are potentially, depending on how you want to look at this, you're either forming a W bottom formation, uh, which should resolve to the upside, but you actually do need a close above that take profit target. Uh, it seems like in this particular situation, that take profit target also works as resistance. Uh, you did come up to it and wicked right down from it fairly strongly, and we did have this descending triangle pattern that I had charted out for us, uh, and we are unable to get back up into that channel um so as long as that as long as that kind of maintains now you could you could like foreseeably put your descending triangle pattern down here if you wanted to um but this does not look overwhelmingly bullish to me now we start you know it and again i i hate how this always sounds but it, this is just the reality um, when you start closing with good bullish volume and you start closing above resistance here, then you start looking at higher and higher and higher uh, take profit targets. But I would be, uh, you know, just the way I trade as well, um, you've definitely uh, been able to take some profits. You have to ask yourself, at what point do you trail your stop up to break even? And at what point will you will you allow yourself to trail your stop up even higher? But I uh, have to kind of wait and see how this plays out. We did get some nice bullish movement right here, but we do have the significant resistance area right here that uh, it's going to be difficult for Doc to get over as well. Uh, these lows right here Actually, corresponding to the new resistance. So see how Doc plays out. But I'm glad you took that trade, man. I'm glad it worked out for you. Just remember your risk management, man, locking those profits. Uh, Jay Constant, I leave the alts to die. They wreck me every time. That's true, man. Uh, crypto friends, what's going on, man? Yes, tell us about XRP. Tell us more about XRP. Uh, most coins are nothing more than a science project. XRP is a real digital asset, read centralized, with real customers creating real adoption and solving real problems. The secret sauce will always be XRP. Hey, man. Love it, bro. Uh, could we take a peek at GVT? Very nice movie today. Yeah, well, sure, Well, We'll take a look at it. Uh, are, am I going to be able to somehow stream the event at the local chapters? Yeah, we will record it, and we'll probably upload it. Oh, jeez. Something just happened? I just opened GVT. Did it pop? Ooh, look at that. Nice movement there on GVT. Yeah, looks like a return to the point of control. Um, man... Would have been nice to be in on this one, huh? Ah, uh, yes, as always. Let's see. So let's take a gander here. Wild left price scale. Okay, we're going to have to go to a higher time frame. There actually is a little bit of data for this bad boy. Okay, so... Yeah, it's definitely a return to the local point of control. Yes, absolutely. And current rejection from that. So here's yeah, the... Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to enter here. Oh, absolutely not. So here, yes. So let me just let me just take this with a grain of salt, guys. Here's the reality of the altcoin markets. Um, with something as volatile as the altcoins, you're always going to have pumps like these. Uh, and if you are lucky enough and fortunate enough to catch it in the early stages, so this is a movement of... of 30% in one day. So if you were able to capture that movement and get in... Fantastic. The way here is how you can capture these movements uh, if you're not on the inside of whoever is particularly pumping this coin. I mean, here's the here's the reality. <clears throat> there is very little technical reason for this to have popped up like it is. Um, okay. Besides the fact that you did come down and wick off the 886 Fibonacci retracement, you do see on the daily chart. You do see on the daily chart um, a little bit of a spinning top indecision doji. Not a strong hammer candle, not a strong inverted man hammer can or excuse me, uh, <laughs> inverted hanging man as well. <laughs> what? What did I say? I, you said man hammer. I said man hammer. <laughs> oh, man. 
Um, so you did, you, you have now closed above the 786 Fibonacci retracement and that 21 period exponential moving average. Now, typically uh, in more traditional markets with when things are in an uptrend, a break, a close above the 21 period moving average is a call option for me. So um, if we are able to close this daily chart above the 21 period moving average uh, and we start off tomorrow and we close and we start this next daily candle with a little bit of bullish volume as well, uh, then you can potentially look at this on entering. But the reality of the situation is you're coming into a, uh, you don't even need need if you look at vpvr let's take away the let's take away those for a second and let's take away the drawing tools so you can just see look you can see this previous distribution order block of high volume where we broke down from uh, and look where we actually got rejection from currently right now now if you are able to close above um this level right here If you are able to close above uh, double zero, so 12,051 Satoshis, if you're able to close above that level, uh, which is a break of resistance, an actual true close above it. I'm talking about a close, not a wick, guys. A daily chart, a 12-hour chart, six-hour chart, four-hour time frame. Uh, then you could potentially be looking at this potentially being the start of something strong. But overall, I'm fairly skeptical on altcoin calls right now. The reason why is because... Uh, well, I'm not skeptical on, on scalps because we've been taking short-term positions in altcoins significantly, especially on Binance. Uh, there's still a lot of volume and still a lot of plays to be made. But how often does something lead to a genuine like continued uptrend like this? About 5% of the time. And the other 95% of the time, everybody that FOMOs in at the top on a big uh, green volume spike right here um, just uh, just just gets wrecked uh, because it generally retraces more than 100%. So uh, just be cautious, could, just be skeptical. You could make a living fading these things if uh, if only we could short alts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, see, uh, right, yeah, absolutely. This would be an area where I would I would love to be looking to take a short position on this. Um, so definitely an area where you definitely want to be booking profits if you were lucky enough to get in on this trade. Uh, anything like an altcoin right now, anything that looks like this, I don't get excited about it. Uh, again, I've said this for a while, but for me, the true call option on any of these altcoins uh, is when we actually have a daily close above the 55 period exponential moving average. As you can see, that is the more legitimate. Uh, that's the more legitimate call option. You can actually see that every time with few exceptions, every time you actually do close above the 55 period moving average after retracing to a healthy level. Uh, so you can actually see here why you would not actually want to take these stabs up here. So if we do a Fibonacci retracement here, uh, you would not want to take this call option above the 55 period moving average or this one right here uh, because we only came down to the 50% we only came down to the 50% Fibonacci retracement. Now, Dow theory in traditional markets uh, would be that things do like to retrace 50%, but the overlying trend was extremely bearish, uh, and you can actually see that you got faked out. It wasn't until you retraced to what? The 88.6 Fibonacci retracement, and then a close above the 55 period moving average, that you did actually have a good healthy retracement. Now, look what happened here. You did retrace back to the, to the 886 Fibonacci retracement, and if you are able to close now in my eyes above the 55 period moving average, which is sitting a little bit higher than that call option that I had set at about 001051, so 12,051 Satoshis. If you are able to actually close a daily above that, then potentially we're looking at, at some decent targets, but uh, we, won't, uh, we won't have any indication of that until that comes. And unfortunately, the higher potential is that we do come back down. But if we are able to If we are able to close above that 55 period moving average, then you are looking at a common retrace zone between uh, 0019044 and 002506. Which from current price, actually, I'm going to measure it from where the call option would be for me. So I actually expect this to make it down to about here. Uh, you're looking anywhere from... I mean, you're looking at a doubling in price. You're looking at 100% potential returns, but very skeptical of this. Have not had a trend reversal yet in most of the altcoin calls. So just be cautious, guys, and make sure that if you are entering trades like this, which I don't recommend, if you are entering trades like this, that you are looking at your risk management very, very carefully. Yes, longs are people who think that Bitcoin will go up. Um, looking to short Ethereum now, will it be the right decision? I think Alex thinks so. It certainly looks like it is going to drop. If you take a look at the F2 Bitcoin market, 
it's um, it's looking pretty weak right now. So I think here, even if we do see a bounce in Bitcoin, we might still end up seeing the price of Ethereum stagnate in USD or even continue to drop. Uh, where we are at the very, if you look at FUSD, we are at the very bottom right now. And if we fall any farther below, like, you know, let's say 81, $80, we're headed straight to $55. No question. There's just a giant gap in the VPVR. If you take a look at it, it good. like goodbye, 80, hello, 55. Yeah. I had to pull up my Finex chart so I could actually get my, my true levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've been kind of saying that for a while, uh, looking at, yeah, looking at Ethereum Bitcoin, actually, I do expect it to devalue a little bit more. Uh, now we are creeping right along the bottom of this, uh, of this descending channel that we've kind of been positing in. And I've been saying this for a while coming up on my next support area right here. Uh, the next potential buy area for me, uh, is between, um, 0 0.02, 1806. And so it's 0.021, 0.022. And 0.024 is really my next buy area uh, for Ethereum. Now, uh, is it is it a potential that we do get a little bounce right here? Yes, but more than likely, we just get because that is an LVN. So right now, we currently are at the bottom of an HVN right now. Uh, that HVN actually extends from uh, 264 to 258, or excuse me, 257. Uh, if we are able to get above 264. Uh, then I do, since this is an LVN in between that, I do expect us to go up and, and retest the bottom of the value area, which would be around 27, 275, uh, 275,000 mm -hmm. Satoshis. I would expect that, but more than likely just looking at this chart, that would be a rejection and an optimal short entry. And then uh, I expect that we do continue moving further down with Ethereum Bitcoin. I do agree with you. I think the ratio will actually get worse. I mean, it just makes sense from a market standpoint. Uh, you know, 2016, was the end of 2016 was right around when the Ethereum, I, I wouldn't say craze. I mean, it was a bull market. There was a Bitcoin craze too, but uh, especially the price of Ethereum went went sky high. Uh, we all know that. Yeah. Now, I think you know Ethereum and Bitcoin kind of in interesting areas where we have seen the breaks. Uh, I mean, just look at this volatility on the way down, uh, and then we can see that the longs did pick up right here uh, just a little bit. And then, uh, and then price continues to move down, and we, we're seeing we're seeing something quite different right here. This is this is quite different from right here because once the bottom broke, uh, we had extreme volatility to the downside, uh, and we're seeing that exact same thing right now. We did see the bottom break, but on very very low volatility at the closing of the week. And now actually, the daily candle on Ethereum is actually more positive than the daily candle for Bitcoin, actually, uh, which is interesting uh, because the daily candle for Bitcoin continues to be. Actually, the uh, the daily the daily candle for Bitcoin continues to look a little bit better, and this is natural. We expect to see this during the weekend, as I said earlier. The reason why is because those who trade on the weekends are generally well, actually not generally all retail, and retail tends to be if we and we can just look at that commitment of traders report here. Small buyers. This represents retail. Uh, they've been you know BTFDing uh, this entire this entire movement and kind of screaming for the moon and screaming for the moon. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what separates a good trader from a bad trader. But um, more than likely, we do see a little bit of green uh, today and early tomorrow. And then again, like I said, I am in a small long position right now. Um, but uh, I have my rich risk hedged very significantly. I have a very tight stop on it, actually. And as I talked about, I've been very transparent with my positions with you guys as as uh, as I've been doing the stream. And it's uh the 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 long is working out well right now actually in decent profits from an average entry of 31.75 and uh but i will not be looking to add to my position or to look into taking a short position until until at least 6 p.m tomorrow until the daily candle closes tomorrow uh, until i can get a better idea of what direction the week's going to go i might even potentially wait until the live stream on monday morning to open or re-enter position so uh let's see here um uh, can I can I show you the supports and resistances on Bitcoin? Well, yeah, they're right here. Um, the the most that I've been able to the best that I've been able to chart out for you, man, based off the last uh, based off the last downtrend and downturn, uh, is right here. I'll turn logarithmic on. Um, twenty nine thirty eight twenty seven ninety eight being the top of the value area. If we take if we take the whole uh, if we take the whole space in here. So looking at the HVN, uh, we do actually have how I like to use support, which is actually the top, the true top. 
of the previous uh, resistance that became support. As you can see, we had resistance back in the summer of 2017. Uh, we did have a double top rejection from it, came up and wicked off of it. We were able to break through in August and July of 2017, and then we wicked all the way down uh, and tested that as, as support uh, before we really had the blow off top uh, where Bitcoin ran all the way to 19k with very little uh, very little retracement in between except for that uh, the uh, except for the beginning of November 2017 uh, and I remember like people were looking to take their lives back then and look if you look at it on a weekly chart like it's just one red week steam rolling through everything else uh, and we're actually seeing that exact same thing on the way down but uh, much more um, much much more choppy and then this long period of consolidation which was distribution and then the levy breaks moving down and we do see price contraction on the weekly as well uh but nothing nothing like nothing that's telling me that we we wouldn't uh, continue to move down further so i do think that uh that 3k is going to represent significant psychological support so as a trader you have to react not predict so i am i am expecting that it will be physically difficult for bitcoin to break 3k with the number of bids on the order books but that can change on a dime people can pull the bids people can stop letting them get chewed up uh, and traders can come in on Monday and we can have another bloody, uh, bloody Monday. And if we do break below that $3,000 psychological support level, I don't expect 2,900 to hold. I don't really expect 2,798 to hold. Uh, I think that we might chop through down, down through there a little bit, kind of like a reverse BART, if you would. But I mean, uh, that is going to trigger the floodgates, a, a weekly close or a weekly open below the 200 period simple moving average, um, a break of the 3,000 psychological support. Uh, and and the complete abandonment on the order books, yeah, that could absolutely happen. So looking at the worst case scenario, I have been saying this for a while. It's written on it's written on the uh, it's written on my desk. I do think that Bitcoin finds a bottom at twenty three thirty one. That's the eighty eight point six Fibonacci retracement. How long it takes us to get here doesn't really matter. And when we get here, I do not expect us to V bottom up. Uh, I do ex well. Excuse me. More than likely, we do have a good like thirty to forty percent violent movement, and that would tell me that the bottom is in. Uh, especially if we look back. Uh, if we look back here at history, uh, we actually see the bottom of the bull, uh, the bottom of the bear market that ended in 2015, and you can see that we wick down almost 30%, and then in that same week, just immediately shoot up. Uh, we immediately shoot up right, right back up to 30. We, we shoot back up 36%, uh, and that's what happens. And then we never even remotely come anywhere near that level again. And that's how you know that a bottom is in. Um, but for the long term, like those who are who are thinking that the bottom is in right now, uh, not really believing that, not seeing that, especially if we look at the daily chart, uh, having all these opportunities to buy the bottom is probably not how it's going to work out. Now, again, uh, is this a psychological area where we could see a relief rally? Yes, I've been saying that for a while. But again, now I have hedged my risk and taken profits on my positions and we'll look to see how this plays out coming in, starting really tomorrow when the daily candle closes tomorrow and looking how Monday is going to play out for us. What's the vertical chart called? Uh, volume profile. Assume I assume that's what you're asking about. This is volume profile, um, visible range, and people talking about dash. People must be uh, people must be um, sending money south of the border. That's when dash gets really busy. Yeah, Venezuela, they like their dash now, especially because their money's worthless. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, Dash, you had, I see this, you had a little bit of a double bottom resistance there on the daily chart. Or excuse me, double bottom support. Uh, you do have still overwhelming resistance. You still haven't closed the daily candle above the eight period simple or ex exponential moving average, uh, which is the first thing that I look for to get excited about. Uh, the volume is not super convincing yet right now. Um, the wick is kind of worrying. I'm sorry, I still had Haikanashi on. Hmm. Yeah, more than likely, like what this is, if we actually look at shorts right here, we did see a recent spike in shorts uh, and then them drop off. This is more than likely a, a, a bottom shorter squeeze. Uh, I don't actually see, look at the longs. The longs haven't really picked up on this. I don't really see the interest from retail to buy this up, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. See how it plays out. It's very hard to be optimistic of a bottom uh, in, in a bear market, guys. You just have to, I mean, the trend is your friend, guys, until that bend at the end, man. Uh, Alex, hey, man, um, I gotta be going pretty soon, so I'll kick the floor over to you if you wanna uh, show us what you're looking at, bro. Oh, um, gosh, I, you know, I've, 
I got looking somebody a lot. At, I got somebody uh, asking at, for. I got somebody asking for TRX Z18. I know that you recently charted that. If you want to talk about that, and um, yeah, sure. So here is I'll tell you what. Let me let me go ahead on and turn on my my chart sharing. Just one second. Yep, and then I'll make you full screen. Okay. Okay, guys. Presumably, you can see my screen now. So uh, I'm gonna head on over to. Hey, click that. Uh, uh, click that hide button at the bottom of your screen. The what? Where it oh. says hide. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at a TRX on reasonable time frame. So what we see here is uh, TRX has been in a, in a pretty strong uptrend, and it's been forming an ascending wedge, which usually breaks to the downside. So what we want to see is, first of all, uh, it, are there signs that it's going to break to the downside? So on the three hour, we see that finally, while price is making a higher high, it is making a lower high on the indicator. So it is beginning to form bear divs. Uh, let's take a look at another time frame. Six hour similarly seems as if uh, the indicator just Honey is not responding. There, there's weakness in price. And wants. you can see that up here. It's, you know, there's... It's kind of like just teetering up there at the top. Uh, now, if you take a look at TRX Z18, something interesting is happening, and that is that it's not in an ascending wedge; it's an ascending triangle. And now, if you that can make sense if you think about this as a product of a large short that is being opened up by a by a whale of some sort or an institution class trader. Uh, so when someone opens a large position that uh, that changes where the futures market is in comparison to the spot market and it pushes down the price of the futures market. So if someone has a giant sell wall, say, uh, obviously it's going to form an ascending triangle beca because price isn't going to be able to breach that sell wall as the institution level trader fills their uh, fills their short bags. So I. Uh, I, I I feel pretty strongly about this uh, this TRX short at, at least down to uh, at least down back to this point of control because first of all it's it's a point of control and second of all we as we see that also kind of conforms to where the bottom of this resistance level and uh, and the where the breakdown of the wedge would take us to all right uh, back to you Justin. Okay, I'll let it catch up. Oh, Understood. my microphone was silent. Sorry about that. Yeah, hey, whoever... Uh... Whoever um, followed on Twitch, um, sorry I can't give you a shout out because your name didn't pop up in my in my restream. Uh, but if you say something, I'll give you a shout out, man. And uh, thank you so much to I do see YouTube though. We did have somebody sub on YouTube, so I'll give you a shout out in just a second while my thing loads. Uh, Studio Ka, hey man, thanks for the sub on YouTube. Highly appreciated. All right, so I got to be going here in just a few minutes, so I think we'll close out today with. Um, with just in general what I expect to see here for XBT USD. Um, I do expect to see um, just based off, you know, basic pattern recognition and my experience in trading, uh, the weekends do seem to be fairly, um, you can't put a lot of uh, stock in what you see on the weekends. Um, so here we are. The, the reality of the situation hasn't changed a whole lot. I expect the, situa the situation over the weekend to be fairly range bound um, and mm -hmm. to pretty much uh, vacillate in between uh, this green box, potentially maybe even if we do get a little bit more volume, uh, potentially even going up here to retest 3300 as well. Uh, that's not off the table. 
Uh, I don't think that we're going to see a significant break of our bottom here, which we've currently put in right now. Uh, so right now our current bottom is at 31.22. I don't think that we're going to see a break of that bottom over the weekend. Uh, but again, Sunday at 6 p.m. is when the Asian markets, the Asian traders really start picking up. Uh, and they do carry a lot of, they do pack a punch. So I'll wait to see what they do. Uh, and then I'll really wait to see uh, kind of how the CME futures open and that'll open, they'll open tomorrow at um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll wait to see what they do as well because I do think that that's a leading indicator for what the market is going to be doing. Um, so I do expect as weekends typically go, retails are more per, uh, retail traders are typically permable, especially the ones that trade on the weekends. So more than likely, we do see a little bit of a slow drift up. I'm not expecting any massive huge volume spikes, although some, you know, Hail Mary, Black Swan events can always happen. Rainbow unicorns can always appear in neigh and paw around to the ground. Uh, so I think we're going to see, you know, just to reiterate this, a little bit of upward movement over the weekend. Uh, but more than likely, I probably will be looking, um, unless things significantly change, I probably will be looking at this point, uh, unless I see volume dictate a different way, I probably will be looking to take a short at around the $3,300 level uh, down to $3,100 and $3,000 to retest these areas. Uh, and I will definitely probably not hold them past that area unless we get an extremely strong high volume break of $3,000 that is not a wick. So something like a four hour candle close below $3,000, I'll probably be uh, not panicking. Uh, just completely set up for that particular situation and trying to capitalize on the panic of others. Now, I still do think it is going to be physically difficult for Bitcoin to break 3,000 with the number of bids that are on the on the table. There is a lot of bullish sign coming in, guys. Um, you know, and everybody who is screaming that we have to, must, absolutely are going to right now at this point in time break 3K, uh, they're just guessing. They're just guessing. Um, they, there's no data metrics to say that we have to do that. In fact, the data, if you look at the bid ask sum, if you look at the longs and shorts positions, if you look at the market depth ratio, if you look at the actual data behind the markets that you should be analyzing, it actually does posit to a good reversal at this point in time. Not the bottom, but a reversal. Let's not um, forget how bearish people were in April of this year. I remember distinctly calls for 3K, calls for 1K in April as, as we hovered around that 6.5K bottom. That, uh, that actually held until, as we know, November. Um, I, I, I remember distinctly having a conversation with a friend about where he was going to be setting up his, uh, his buys for when Bitcoin fell that far. But it took quite a while for us to reach this point. So, I mean, sure, maybe... Maybe there's a hundred percent chance that three K is going to break. That doesn't mean it's going to break anytime soon necessarily. I absolutely agree. Hey, Embate, <clears throat> Embate, thank you so much for the uh, for the follow on Twitch, man. I highly appreciate it. I'm gonna have to tip you some of that beautiful MMO, guys. Um, Embate says caught a ten percent profit off of KNC, and it was on and it, and it was on its way back down last time I checked. So I'm happy. There you go, man. There you go. Uh, money make life easy. Yeah, that's right. Hey, man, I remember you. Uh, thanks for rejoining us. I feel like shorting everything is the only way to make it. Yeah, up until this point, it has been. But the problem is, is that once it becomes casual to say that is typically the point in time where the same strategy will not carry you into the future. So at this point in time, uh, the more likely scenario that I am seeing is a potential short at 3,300 to test 3,100, 3,000. If we are able to close above 3,300, 3,400, uh, then I start looking at a potential long to 3,600. And again, a strong close above 3,600, uh, 4,000 to 4,400 would be our next targets. And a, a strong close below 3,000, uh, then I pretty much look to be in a comfortable short until I see clear, obvious signs of capitulation. Uh, and they will be fairly easy to spot because uh, Bitcoin will spike down something like 20 or 30 percent and then spike back up 20 or 30 percent in a very quick period of time. Uh, just based off how I've seen markets bottom and just based off what we saw last time when the last bear, when the last uh, bear market bottomed. So. so just be cautious, guys. Make sure that you are managing risk, because as long as you're managing risk, um, you actually don't have to be as right as you think you do as far as direction. Direction matters less than risk management, because all you can do as a trader is enter into optimum points where you see good trades. And you, you tip again, like you short resistance and you long support. It's very simple and you manage risk. And if you keep your risk managed and you are disciplined about how much you allow yourself to lose daily, weekly, monthly, and you keep that the same, you use, uh, you use your actual portfolio size to determine what amount of dollars you can lose per trade. You don't get over your skis. You pull out your calculator 
every single trade. You pull out your calculator to determine your risk every single trade, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You won't blow your account out, and it doesn't really matter which way the market moves because as a trader, it doesn't matter. I mean, as a like people like think that's crazy. Like uh, as a trader, it doesn't matter which way the markets move up, down, left, right, sideways. It doesn't matter. There's a position to be taken. There's a trade to be taken everywhere. Uh, and, you know, just to sum it, to, to, to reduce it to its simplest element, long support and short resistance. Uh, it's it's pretty simple, man. Um, you know, long confirmed breakouts, um, fade potential breakouts, uh, and you'll be fairly successful and manage risk. Don't let yourself lose more than two to three percent of your entire portfolio on any trade. Learn when to get out, cut your losses quick, and you'll be good, man. You'll be good. And it doesn't matter which way we go. So um, that's about all I got. Alex, you got anything you want to talk about? No, I think I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me on the show today, Justin. Hey, no problem, man. Thanks for joining us. We will end today as we always do. Let me see if I got any chat that I missed. <laughs> hey, mate, you're funny, bro. Hey, thanks so much for joining us, man. All right, guys, let's talk about the most important thing you can do with your day. Uh, besides, um, just, just besides being excellent and awesome guys and just having a fantastic day it's the weekend man go spend time with your friends and family uh spend time with the ones you love if you don't have anybody that you love uh yourself you know read a book or listen to some podcasts just you know relax and enjoy your weekend guys um so head on over to crackingcryptocurrency.com. Uh, first off, if you do if you do like the show, if you if you support us being on here, if you want to support the stream, uh, we're normally here every single morning at 12, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, eleven a.m. Central Standard Time every morning, uh, Monday through Sunday. Uh, we're start we did it we did it a little bit late today because I do have my kids on the weekend, so uh, you know we're doing that the best we can. Um, but uh, as always, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because we are here live every single morning, cracking cryptocurrency. Uh, and if you are a returning viewer and you liked what you saw, guys, we'd appreciate it if you if you tap that like button. Just just tap it gently, guys. You don't have to smash it. Don't be violent. Just just give it a little nudge, guys. We would appreciate that. Um, if you want to support the stream, there's many ways to do it, guys. Uh, you could give us a one-time uh, PayPal donation or check out our Patreon if you would like value added. Uh, but I think that you would like to get something for something for supporting the stream. So you can head over to the merch section of our website and see what we have to offer. Now, this is fantastic, guys. If you do actually drink your morning coffee out of our cracking cryptocurrency hodl mug let me find the, the one that i like uh this is the one that i just bought the other day uh if you do drink your coffee out of this bad boy uh your coffee will taste 95 percent better and you will scientifically proven be 80 percent more attractive to the opposite sex guys i do have the i do have the reports to prove that uh alex can attest to that he's been killing it with the ladies lately yes but just remember the math behind it it's 96 percent better in the cracking crypto mug because it's 48 percent worse without it <laughs> Absolutely, man. Uh, if you guys would like to join the Cracking Cryptocurrency Premium Trading Group, you can head over to the website to find information about that. The information is also in the Discord. Uh, you will get access to the VIP chat room, the VIP day trading voice chat. You will get your own trade journal. You will get access to the to our live tracking sheet. You will get access to once a week private webinars one on one time with the traders and analysts of Cracking Cryptocurrency. Uh, you will also get access to all our trading signals and trade setups, charts and strategies uh, for why we do that, uh, as well as one on one mentorship for learning how to trade as well, guys. So. Uh, We'd like to see you in there at $79.99 a month. Uh, we would be, we, we're looking forward to seeing you guys if you guys, guys would like to pop in there. Um, as always, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, opinions, sarcastic remarks, or death threats, leave them in the comment section down below, or you can reach us at contact at crackingcryptocurrency.com or DM us in the Discord. That's all I got, guys. Until tomorrow, until next time, make sure you guys trade safe, and we'll see you tomorrow, Cracking Cryptocurrency. Thank you.